Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're going to get started in just about a minute. We'll give people a chance to log on. Hello again, everybody. Uh, I think we're just about ready to get started. Just giving everybody a chance to log on. Um, so welcome. My name is Lori Wax. I am the regional recruiter for New York for Penn State. We are so happy that you're here joining us tonight. Uh, we have uh, a short presentation that we're going to uh, present to you, and then uh, we're going to give you the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, please note that the chat is uh, not turned on, but the Q&A function will be working, and please feel free to ask your questions. You might get a lot of those answered during the presentation, uh, but we will do our best to answer all of your questions tonight. Uh, so I am going to turn this over to our um, uh, New, New Jersey recruiter and uh, assistant director of admissions, Stacy Kowalczyk, uh, and she's going to share some information about Penn State, some of the highlights of a Penn State education, and a little bit of information about our admissions process. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you, Lori. It is lovely to see you all tonight. Thank you so much for logging on to hear about Penn State. Uh, we're thrilled to have you join us. So, so thank you for taking time out on a, on a Monday night uh, to hear a little bit about Penn State University. As Lori mentioned, um, this is a Zoom webinar. So you'll see on the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A box. So as I'm going and giving you information about Penn State, if you have questions, please feel free to, to type them in. We have sort of an army of my favorite colleagues are on the back end of, of this uh, webinar tonight, and they will be able to answer any questions that you may have. And you may also find that I cover uh, some of the questions you may be wondering about as uh, I go through and give you some general overview information about Penn State. And then like Lori said, we will all pop on and we will do a question and answer in the second half of this program this evening. So thank you again so much for joining us. My name is Stacey Kowalczyk. And like Lori said, I am the New Jersey Regional recruiter for Penn State. I'm happy to be with you tonight. And this program is being recorded. So if you have any questions or want to see a playback later, you can feel free to email us at admissions at psu.edu and we can provide you a recording of this program. Um, so let's get in and sort of talk about the university, talk about Penn State University. We like to sort of start start big and then narrow it down a little bit. So Penn State is a, a large sort of major, if you will, uh, research university. We're the State University of Pennsylvania. We are a multi-campus system. We have a total enrollment at the university of about 88,000 students. And now those students are spread out among 20 campuses all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So you'll hear me, me talk a little bit more about that as we get into the program. Penn State is home to a wealth of academic programs, great options for students to, to explore. So let's talk a little bit about some of those options. Penn State is known as a top 1% world-class institution. The Center for World University Rankings ranks universities all over the world, um, close to 20,000 of them, and Penn State ranks in the top 1%. And we have many programs that are also nationally ranked programs in their field. There are a couple of numbers on the, the screen that I think are important to look at when you're looking at any school in your college search process. And I would uh, in, encourage you to look at the graduation rate and the retention rate. And what that tells you at the university, the retention rate means the number of students we admit for their first year at the university who do enroll at the university, how many of them continue on to their second year with the university. So we think that means that we are admitting the right students and then we're supporting you academically, socially, and all the ways that our students need to be supported through advisement 
employment and health services, everything like that, to get you from your first year at the university onto your second year at the university. And then we're also really proud of our graduation rate at the university. 85% is well above the national average. And we know right now you may be 16 or 17 and you are looking at, at schools and you are doing all the research about where you're going to go to college. And we know one of the big questions you're asking right now is, where am I going to get in? How am I going to get in? What am I, what, where am I going to go to college? How am I going to get in? But we think what you should be thinking about is, am I going to get out? Am I going to graduate, right? So at Penn State, we are really proud to say that we're supporting you to get you through your four years of the university to graduation and then supporting you for whatever comes next. Maybe it's medical school, maybe it's law school, maybe it's a full-time job. Penn State is really proud to say we have top-ranked career services. Um, so if you are looking for that on-campus interview or that on-campus uh, on uh, recruitment opportunity, we are home to the largest career fair east of the Mississippi twice a year at our University Park campus. Um, over 1,100 employers come to Penn State University to interview and, and hire our students for co-ops, internships, full-time jobs. So that's really important to us. We want to support our students, not only academically when you're a student, but then when you graduate to, to get that job or, or even beyond when you become an alumni, you can come back and take advantage of our career services. So that's something we're really proud of at Penn State University. We are also home to one of the largest study abroad programs at any university in, in the United States. We have over 300 programs and you can study abroad for a full year. You can go for a semester. You can go for just a May master or um, a six or eight week summer session. That's an option for study abroad as well. We think it's an important enriching part of the college experience. So we want to encourage you to take advantage of that. And even though we are a large university, we are still able to maintain that 16 to one student to faculty ratio. So you are going to be able to get that time with your professors. And we are proud to say that we have over a billion dollars in undergraduate research opportunities. So companies, industries, the government, they are coming to Penn State with their problems and they are saying, help us do the research to figure these things out. And we don't hold undergraduate research opportunities for upperclassmen. So you are able, starting even in your first year, to take advantage of research opportunities. And that allows you to work more closely with professors. It also allows you to get deeper into your academics. So if that's of interest to you, we would encourage you to look into into that. And as I mentioned, our academic programs, we are proud to say that we have over 275 academic programs at Penn State University for you to take advantage of. If you would like, you can apply into a specific academic program. We just have 11 of those that you need to apply to in the application process. Or typically when you are applying to the university, we are going to admit you as a pre-major status into one of our academic colleges. So let's say, for example, you know that you want to study civil engineering. We would be um, reviewing your application for the College of Engineering. Hopefully, we could admit you as a pre-major student into the College of Engineering at Penn State University. And then work through working with your advisor, taking for some prerequisite courses, you would be able to declare your major, typically in your fourth semester. Or you could apply to us undecided. That's that's an option for you as well. I personally think you get excellent advisement um, and that chance to, to explore if you start out undecided. So that's an option as you go through the process as well. And we have over 1,200 clubs and activities for you to be involved in at Penn State. And we think that's a really large part in the student experience at Penn State. And we would encourage you to get as involved as possible uh, to enrich your, your college experience, right? So the the picture on the screen here is the, a picture of Dance Marathon. It is the largest student-run philanthropy in the world. It's run entirely by Penn State students. It's a year-long fundraising effort where students are working together to raise money to fight pediatric cancer for the, through the Four Diamonds Fund. And it culminates in a 46-hour no-sitting, no-sleeping dance marathon in February every year. Last year, our students raised over $14 million. And it's a really large part of many Penn State students' 
experience. Um, but you know, if, if philanthropy is your thing, that's an opportunity for you to get involved. Maybe it's student government, maybe it's student newspaper, um, it, maybe it's sports and activities. We have 31 Division I varsity athletic sports that compete in the Big Ten Conference. We also have campuses that offer D3 athletics, intramural and club athletics, if that's of interest to you. So there's all kinds of ways to get involved and really in deep with your studies at Penn State. Now, Penn State University is a unique system in that we have 20 campuses all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I'm going to show you a map on the next slide, but I'm going to explain the way it works before I pull up that map. So the way it works is you can do what we call the two plus two program, where you would start your degree at one of our Commonwealth campuses, do the first two years of your academics, and then transition on to another campus to complete your degree. Or you can do all four years of your degree at a particular campus. This is the map of the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and everywhere on this map that there's a blue dot, there's a Penn State campus. You can see on this map that some of the campuses have these little orange monopoly houses. Some of the campuses have these little red monopoly houses. On your application to Penn State, we're gonna ask a few main questions, but one of the things we wanna know is what's your first choice campus and what's your alternate choice campus. So we want you to do a little bit of research so you can get some uh, knowledge about the campuses and figure out which would be a good first and alternate choice campus for you. So let me explain a little, little bit further. The University Park is the largest campus. It may be the one that you are most familiar with. Everywhere on the map that has these orange monopoly houses means that there are on-campus housing, like dorm rooms. Um, housing at that, these campuses is on a first-come, first-served basis, though. The campuses that have red monopoly houses mean that housing is required and guaranteed for first year students. So if you are coming to one of these campuses, you would be required to live in a dorm room for your first year at the university. Um, I know there'll be some questions about this. We do have a representative from one of our campuses on who can sort of spread a little bit more light on the, the campuses in the two plus two program. But I think it's important to know that Penn State University is one university geographically dispersed all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So no matter which campus you start at, no matter which campus you finish at, your degree says the Pennsylvania State University. There is not a campus for a particular academic discipline. Academically, you can start just about any one of our programs at any one of our campuses. The difference being those 11 direct admit programs that I talked about when I was talking about the academics. So there are just a couple exceptions to the, that rule. They're typically programs in the College of Arts and Architecture that would have a performance uh, component to them where you would specifically need to be at University Park. There are a couple other exceptions, but by far and large of those 275 academic programs that I mentioned, you can do just about 260 of them starting starting at any one of our campuses. So let me talk for a second about what you need to know about the application process to Penn State and getting your application done. So you're going to apply online. You can apply either via the My Penn State app directly or through the Common app. You need to create your My Penn State profile. You're going to log into that My Penn State profile to submit your SAR to us, your self-reported academic record, where you're going to take your high school transcript and you're going to go line by line and let us know what classes you took and what grades you got in it. So you're going to support, uh, submit that SAR through your My Penn State profile. And Penn State is currently test optional and we will be for the next two years. So for those of you that are logged on right now that are juniors um, or sophomores in your second year of, of, of high school, um, Penn State will be test optional in the application process through 2025. Now, what that means is that if you don't send us your test scores, that's totally fine. We don't hold that against you in the application process at all. It's totally up to you. If you do send us your test scores and want us to use your test scores in our application review, we will. Couple things to note, we take either the SAT or the ACT. We don't have a preference, but we do need the scores directly from the testing service. And that's really all you need for a Penn State application. So the next slide I put up is often the slide that people take pictures of or um, call it the scary slide, but this information is readily available on our website. So um, you don't have to take a picture of this slide, but 
It's just um, general information for you to know. Um, these numbers on this slide, is they're not meant to be cutoffs. They are truly just a guide. This is the middle 50% range of students who were admitted last year to the university. So that means that 25% of our students scored higher than this, 25% of our students scored lower than this. And you can see it's divided into the University Park campus and the Commonwealth campuses. You could also see admission is slightly more competitive at the University Park campus. That just has to do with supply and demand, right? We get over 100,000 applications to that campus, and unfortunately, we can't admit all of the students who apply to, to that campus. So this is sort of that middle 50% range to help you estimate your eligibility. If you find yourself on the lower end of one of these ranges, you might need to be a little bit more flexible about your choices, whether it's um, campus or maybe even semester things to think about, like the summer session if you're interested in the University Park campus. Now, this slide is actually what I think is the most important slide in the presentation that I'm, I'm giving. It has uh, the financial aid timeline on the top, but it has the application timeline on the bottom. Penn State works on early action for admissions. So the application becomes available August 1st. You want to make sure that you get your application in by that early action deadline of November 1st. So that's a complete application. So that online application, the SAR, and if you're going to send us your test scores, we need all of that in our hands by November 1st for your best chance of enrollment. We fill our spots at our popular campuses like University Park with students who are applying in that early action uh, time frame. Now that's not binding. Early action is just um, a, a date that you're going to apply by November 1st and you're going to have an admissions decision earlier by December 24th of your senior year of high school. Being that it's non-binding, it's just a school you're going to hear from earlier, and then you have it in your back pocket until May 1st to accept your offer to Penn State or wherever else it may be. And you don't have to go through the housing process until after that. Like the, I said, the housing at the campuses that have those red monopoly houses, housing is guaranteed. So you can wait up until May 1st to accept your offer of admission. Now, those orange monopoly house campuses Housing is on a first come first serve there, so you may want to be a little earlier in the process than May 1st, but those are those are things that you can worry about after you get your application in. The financial aid information on the top of the, the uh, timeline here is going to move back a little bit this year with the FAFSA um, sort of moving back its deadline, it will move back all of our deadlines. Um, I, I'm still going to say the, the winter, December, January is a good time to be filling out that FAFSA form, and then we'll move forward, move back aid award notification probably to late February, early March. The next slide I'm going to pop up is often also a scary slide, but we want to make sure that you are aware of tuition and then also um, room and meals, everything like that. You can see that um, the tuition slide is divided into Pennsylvania residents and then non-Pennsylvania residents because we are the State University of Pennsylvania, right? So um, you could also see that it's broken down into the University Park campus and the Commonwealth campuses. So you could see there's a pretty significant cost savings to starting out and attending one of the Commonwealth campuses. And the reason for that is that um, the Commonwealth campuses are smaller, right? So it costs less money for us to operate those campuses. So we're able to pass on the savings of operating those campuses to the students who attend those campuses. So you want to make sure that you are aware of that when you are um, factoring in financial finances, right? And the last thing that I'm going to say before I turn it back over to Lori, and what I really think is important, because I we want you to be informed consumers, right? And we want you, we know that that college degree is probably one of the largest investments you are ever going to make, right? We want you to, to do the research, to be informed consumers. And what I really want to leave you with is the idea of that return on that investment, right? Penn State is not the only school, but we are one of the schools where you're never going to have to explain to anyone what it means to have a Penn State degree. The value of that Penn State degree and that brand is going to stay with you and your, your degree for the rest of your life, right? So that, that's going to be the name on your resume. It's going to say Penn State University, and you will be joining 
the largest alumni association on the planet. So Penn State has over 700,000 living Penn Staters all over the world. And that's a really large network to be a part of, right? And, and maybe it comes across that you are sitting down for a job interview and the person who's interviewing or you across the table says, hey, you're a Penn Stater, I'm a Penn Stater too. You know, it's not going to be the thing that gets you the job that's certainly up to you, but it but it will start that conversation and open that door. Or maybe you move to a new town, a new city, a new state, a new country. You only have to look as far as the Penn State Alumni Association to find that, that group to be a part of. One in every 106 Americans with a college degree is a Penn Stater. And that, that's an astounding statistic. That is a large number of people. And that is a really large network to, to be proud of. And the return on that investment is something that we are we are very proud of. Um, the next slide that I'm going to pop up before I, I'm going to turn it back over to Lori here in a second, um, but we want to make sure that you have our contact information. Like I said, the Q&A box is open. We are happy to take your, your chats. Lori has um, some questions prepared to, to uh, for me, myself, and our colleagues who are going to hop on here in a second. But if you have any questions after today, please feel free to email us at admissions at psu.edu, um, check out our website, and then hopefully come visit us this summer at one of our Spend a Summer Day programs. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Stacy. That was awesome. Um, so we are so fortunate to be joined tonight by some uh, of our other awesome colleagues here at Penn State. Um, Celine uh, Fritash from the Schreier Honors College is here. And Celine, I was uh, hoping you could talk to us a little bit more about the Schreier Honors College. Of course, Lori, thank you so much. So the Schreier Honors College is a great way that you can enrich your experience at Penn State. You'll be able to take some honors courses as well as write a thesis. This is gonna set you apart from all the other students when you go and graduate from Penn State. And those honors courses are also gonna give you the opportunity to learn a little differently on a smaller scale with only 25 students per course. We'll make sure that you have all the support you need by providing you with an honors advisor, as well as a thesis advisor that will help navigate through all these processes. In addition to all of this, we also have select study abroad opportunities that we offer our students. Stacy mentioned that Penn State has some great Penn, uh, study abroad opportunities, but we also have our own that we have in the Honors College that are largely funded by the Honors College. So if you want to take a hold of those, you can. And we also there are embedded programs too. So you can take these programs and be able to study abroad during spring break in case if you can't take any time off of class or summer. In addition to this, we also have select research and internship opportunities that are only available to Schreier Honors students. So if that's something that you would like to participate in, this would be a great thing that you can apply to and hopefully get in. In addition, we will give you $5,000 every year that you are a Schreier Scholar, as long as you maintain a 3.4 GPA from semester to semester. We also have guaranteed housing for all four years if you choose so, and you can be a Schreier Scholar at any one of our Commonwealth campuses. They are, it is not University Park exclusive, so make sure that you apply because it would be a great way that you can start your Penn State experience off right. In addition, our application process will comprise of eight short answer questions and two essay questions. In addition, you'll be required to submit your self-reported academic record through Penn State, and that will be the only thing that we receive. So make sure if you submit a personal essay from, for the Common App, or if you have an extracurricular sheet, we will not be able to see that. So make sure you answer the short answer and essay questions in their entirety. And we'll also review your self-reported academic record in addition, your two letters of recommendation with a maximum of four, and these need to be from a teacher or a coach, someone who's worked with you professionally or academically. Our application will open up on August 1st, just like Penn State, so I'd encourage you to get those applications in as soon as you can, and if you get them in by November 1st, you'll hit not only Penn State's early action deadline, but you'll also be able to have the opportunity to have an alumni interview. It's completely optional if you have your application in by the state, but it's a great way that you can start to get involved in the Honors College already. But our final application deadline will be on December 4th. So make sure that all of those application materials are turned in by the state. And then we'll have our decisions released at March 1st at the latest. So you can apply through the Common App or through your My Penn State account. And if you have any questions, you can look us up uh, 
PSU, or sorry, at shc.psu.edu and ask us any questions. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much, Celine. That was great. Um, so now I just wanted to turn to Adam Harrell from our Altoona campus. Um, Adam, if you could possibly answer some questions or tell us a little bit more about the two plus two program um, and just the transition, you know, if you participate, what the transition is like from uh, one of the campuses to another campus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think the two and two program, a lot of times when we talk about it, is something that is a huge part of Penn State that a lot of people when they're looking at Penn State for the first time don't necessarily realize is such a big part of Penn State. Uh, just about half of our students altogether will attend one of the uh, Commonwealth campuses in their time at Penn State. So I think a lot of times, you know, when you see Penn State on TV, things like that, you're thinking University Park. That's where, you know, you see the football and things along those lines. But Penn State's a whole lot more than that. And um that offers a lot of things to students. One of them is the networking aspect. Um, you know, we've mentioned it. I'm a Penn State grad. When I was coming in, I thought the networking was just a really nice sales pitch. You know, we have a lot of these people. Um, as somebody that's graduated, I can tell you it is 100% genuine. Um, I know a ton of people, a lot of my close friends, me included, have gotten into some really cool jobs, internships, and positions because of the connections we made within Penn State. And a lot of those come from these smaller campuses. Um, one of the nice ways you can kind of look at the two and two system, if you know you want Penn State, you know you want that degree that's going to carry in a lot of diff different directions, can take you in a lot of different places, but maybe you're hesitant about a larger class size, right? Maybe you're afraid of going to that big campus right away. Um, maybe you have plans down the line that you want to go to law school or med school, and you know you want that really, really strong GPA right out of the gate. Start at a smaller campus. You'll have a little, little bit of a smaller class size. You'll have a little bit more of that kind of one-on-one -on -one opportunity early on, and it's still Penn State. You know, there's a lot of options that you're still moving through the system. The curriculums are the same. Um, so that's always kind of my first invite is be curious. Um, know that there is a Penn State campus that's going to match exactly what you're looking for. Uh, they're all different, everything from 300 students up to, you know, 5,000 at the Commonwealth students all the way up to, or excuse me, the Commonwealth campuses all the way up to, you know, 47,000 at University Park. Um, so a lot of really, really good options, and each campus has their own admissions office and their own resources to help you out. So don't be afraid to look for resources and reach out to us when you have questions. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, is there any advice you would give students on how to best select their two campus choices? For sure. Um, so as we mentioned, when you're looking at the application, you'll have your primary campus choice and an alternate campus choice. And a lot of people will put University Park as that primary choice, which, hey, we expect that, you know, that is, again, the campus that a lot of people think of when they think of Penn State. Uh, the advice I give a lot of times when looking at that kind of second option and how to choose is to really think about what you're looking for in a college. If you know, OK, I want Penn State, but then think, well, why do I want Penn State? Or if I wasn't going to University Park, what size of school would I look for otherwise? What am I looking for on a campus? And then. Find some options that match that. If you know you want a little bit of a larger scale, we have some campuses, like I said, that are in that 5,000 range. If you know you want to be closer to a city or even closer to University Park or closer to home, wherever you're from, there's a lot of those flexibility options. So I'd say narrow it down to maybe three other campuses you're looking for and kind of do a tour, right? Um, a lot of the campuses, you have to drive past one to get to the other anyway on a lot of the main roads through Pennsylvania. So um, a lot of times, depending on which direction you're coming, you can make a couple stops within a few days and really kind of get an idea of what you're looking for. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, Stacy, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the summer program that you yeah, have. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Lori. I love talking about the summer program at University Park because that's how I started my degree at Penn State University. I started in the summer session. Um, when I applied to Penn State University, I was not admitted to the fall at the University Park campus, but I had checked that box that I wanted to be considered for the summer session. So I got the letter in the mail that said, we cannot offer you fall, but we can offer you the summer at University Park. And there was a, a day that went by that I was kind of a little bit bummed. I was thinking I was going to miss out on my senior beach week and things like that. And I, I so I get that. Um, and that's the, the reason I tell you that story is because I understand the hesitation um, to, to missing your, your senior summer at home, right? However, you know, I thought about it for a few minutes and I was like, I get to go to college six weeks early. This is a total win, right? College is the best time ever. So, um, 
The summer session at the University Park campus is a six-week session. It happens right after you graduate from high school. So usually starts about June 28th or so. Goes six weeks, so to usually about August 10th at that University Park campus. You take We encourage you to take two classes, so that's six credits. We would also encourage you to take part in our LEAP program at University Park that stands for the Learning Edge Academic Program. We at Penn State love our acronyms um, and you could be part of a Lion Pride, get it? Like a pride of Nittany Lions. We are the Penn State Nittany Lions. So in your pride, you are going to pick a pride that's of an academic interest to you. So let's say you are a first year student who is interested in business. You are part of the business leap pride. You take a first year business class, and then you might also take a first year writing class or a public speaking class. The two classes are team taught. The professors are working together. So you would be writing in your writing class about what you were learning in your, your business class, right? And, the, and vice versa. You live on the same dorm floor with the 25 students who are taking those classes with you. So it's a nice little cohort that you're forming if you're part of Elite Pride. You also have an upperclassman mentor who goes through those two classes with you and then works you through basically what I describe as a six-week orientation of the University Park campus. So maybe one week they will take you to try all the libraries on campus. Maybe one week it's all the recreation facilities and you get to check out all the gyms on campus. Campus. Maybe one week it's we're going to try every different eatery on campus. So by the time you're done with those six weeks, you have that cohort of friends, you've taken those six those six credits, you have them in your back pocket, and you are very comfortable at the University Park campus. You go home for about 10 days, then you come back in the fall semester with the rest of the students who are starting in the fall at the University Park campus. And you just have that summer experience. You are comfortable on campus. You have those friends that you made and you have those credits. So if you get into a situation later on in your academic career, you could be ahead academically by those six credits. So perhaps you maybe could even be in a position to graduate early. Or if you are taking a really tough semester and you um, have a lot of classes that you find challenging, maybe you only need to take 12 credits, which is four classes to remain a full-time student instead of the, the normal course load of, of 15 credits and five classes. So those six credits give you a lot of flexibility. We also find that students who start in the summer Summer session because those classes are smaller and you're starting really in that cohort environment, you're getting better GPAs and you're starting off really um, just, uh, it's a, I like to think of it, University Park's a big place, right? I compare it often to a swimming pool. If you start the first day of the fall, you are jumping off the diving board into the deep end. If you start in the summer session, it's kind of like walking in from the shallow end a little at a time. It's a great opportunity to get comfortable. And specifically, if you found yourself on the lower end of one of those academic areas, whether it's GPA or at test scores for the University Park campus, we would encourage you to check yes, that you'd like to be considered for the summer session, because we will fully review your application for the fall at University Park first. And if we can admit you, great, we do. We only look at your application for the summer at University Park if we could not admit you to the fall. So it's sort of like giving your application to University Park a little parachute there. Thank you so much, Stacey. Um, so there are several questions about um, applying directly into majors and also about changing majors and how hard it is to transfer from one major to another major or change majors. Celine, would you be able to answer that question and talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. So um, when you are wanting to admit directly into a major or switch between majors, it can seem really difficult and kind of overwhelming. So in your first two years at Penn State, actually, you're in a pre-major. So that gives you somewhat of a little bit more flexibility when it comes to figuring out exactly what's right for you. If you're wanting to switch your major in the same college, that's going to be a little bit easier than if you wanted to switch your major and be a part of a different academic college. For example, if you start out and you're really passionate and you want to be a political scientist and so you become a political science major and then you realize chemistry may actually be what I want to do. 
that would be a conversation that you should have early on with your academic advisor. So you can hopefully make that switch as soon as possible. So you can start taking some of those STEM courses uh, and vice versa. Um, in case if you wanted to go from STEM to humanitarian, humanitarian majors, um, then you can go ahead and do that too. Uh, in case if you also want to double major too, it's a great way to be able to broaden your academic interests and also be able to also focus in on something that you might be passionate about too. So that would be a great way that you can get more involved on campus and be able to try out di different things. Um, our Smeal College of Business though, if you are very much interested in applying to it, that is uh, one of the colleges that you need to apply directly into. Um, and in case if you're not ready to make that decision yet and you're truly undecided, then a, our Division of Undergraduate Studies major is perfect for those students and maybe perfect for you. That gives you that opportunity to really be flexible with your major and also with your classes so you can try everything that you kind of want to. Thank you so much. Perfect. Um, so Adam, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about getting involved on campus. Uh, we have a very active, engaged student body, and uh, I just was wondering if you could give us a little perspective on getting involved. Yeah, for sure. Um, every campus has a lot of different things you can do. Um, everything from organizations, clubs, things along those lines to full extracurriculars that are related to academics. Um, I mean, University Park itself has over 1,200 programs. All of our other campuses are vast in the number of them. Um, some things like THON, the dance marathon we talked about, go across multiple campuses and you can participate in a lot of different you know, parts of Penn State in a lot of different ways. Um, there are some other programs that might be slightly more specific or unique to individual campuses. Um, there are extracurriculars that are designed to be more social and kind of blowing off steam, you know, just more making friends. And there are some that lean more academic. Uh, the one example I always use is SNAP. It's the Student Nurses Association of Pennsylvania. A lot of Penn State nursing students are involved with it. You're not required to be a part of it with the nursing degree, but a lot of our students do find that that networking and kind of early um, access, for lack of a better word, maybe early exposure to a lot of those experiences helps out. Um, so I think extracurriculars are great. I think one of the nice parts about Penn State is anytime you talk to Penn State or a Penn Stater and you know you ask, oh, what campus did you go to? That's the first question is, where'd you start? Where'd you finish? And the second question a lot of times is, what did you do while you were there? And I think that paints everybody's view of Penn State differently, right? Everybody has an idea of Penn State as their memory, you know, kind of what they liked about it. And that's different for every single person. Uh, the extracurriculars and the opportunities that Penn State offers makes a very, very big school into a very, very small place very quickly. Um, it's really, really accessible in that way. We have something called the Involvement Fair that a lot of campuses, regardless of college and university, will have. Um, but essentially, it's tables laid out and all of our campuses will do this but it's just different organizations, different clubs that are waiting for you to sign up and participate. Um, the advice I always give to a student, if you come to Penn State, great, wonderful, we're happy you came in, but if you find another place that suits you better, um, the same advice stands true. Find a few things that you're curious about, get involved early. Uh, you don't have to stick with them for four years or two years or six months, but it's a great way to kind of start building out that little corner of campus for yourself and kind of building that image, you know, that you're gonna have when you graduate and look back. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, Celine, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the experiential learning opportunities that are available to students through internships and co-ops um, and a little bit more about career services at Penn State. Yeah, of course. So a big thing about Penn State is that we are a research institution. So if you really want to get involved on campus with research opportunities, we have a place for you. And this is a really great place to be. Um, as Stacey mentioned before, we have a billion dollars and that we bring in fund wise to help our research opportunities for our students. And that's not just reserved for our graduate students. Our graduate students need help in lab. And so they reach out a lot of the times to our undergraduate students. So this is a great way that you can get that real world experience and even in your first year if that's something you're interested in. So if you're really interested in doing that, once you come on campus, you can look up a couple of professors and see where their interests lie and maybe ask them if you can shadow them for a week or two to see if that might be something you're interested in. And then hopefully by your second semester, you can fully declare that you're going to be a part of that lab and that research opportunity and for internships as well. 
Um, a few of our colleges even have career services in their own academic college. So they'll be able to offer you internships that are just based on your area interest. Um, we even have our own in the Schreier Honors College, as well as the uh, School of Business, Communications, Everly College of Science, Liberal Arts. It just really depends what you're looking for, but we have an opportunity for you, and that goes for career services too. So if you're really interested in just getting a full-time job as soon as you graduate and you're really excited to use that Penn State degree to work, we're going to make sure that you have around 50 pages of opportunities as long as you come knocking on our door. And we're exaggerating on those 50, 50 pages of opportunities because we have a great alumni network that always reach out, reaches back out to our opportunities office because they have all of the great opportunities available to our future alumni. If I can actually chime in on that real quick. Um, so I work with some of the students at Penn State Altoona's campus and specifically that 50 page document she's kind of talking about um, to give you an example of the scale that Penn State can work in. Uh, this student is from Washington, D.C. area, but is going to uh, Penn State Altoona and wanted an internship close to home. He has a baby nephew that he wanted to kind of hang out with and wanted to be back in D.C. and worked with our career services department. And they essentially said, hey, give us a couple days. We'll pull together what we have. And within a few days, he had a list of not only, you know, connections in D.C. that were looking for interns, but Penn State connections in D.C. that were looking for internships. And he was able to call. I think it took him three calls and he was set up for the summer and he's starting that internship now. So um, it's not rare when we kind of use these examples of, you know, these cool things that line up and really great opportunities. They're there in abundance if you just go and ask for them, like Celine said. Thank you so much, uh, Adam and Celine. Adam, actually, while you're off on, while your mic is on, uh, would you like to talk a little bit about housing opportunities at different campuses and also, you know, cars on campus? Um, so housing is probably one of the things that's going to vary most between campuses because a lot of it depends on the geography of the campus, where they're located in terms of what's around them, um, how many students they have, how much housing they need. Um, so as you saw on that slide that was featured earlier, and you can find that on our website as well, but it's about half, I'd say maybe a little bit better than half, just without counting off the top of my head, um, campuses do have housing available. The only campuses where you are required to live on campus for that first year, as you see on the map there, are Barron and University Park, and um, Schuylkill it has some new housing that I believe just became into the Penn State system. Um, so that's the one thing I like to mention sometimes on those maps. I don't know if that's fully marked yet there. Um, but among those other campuses, it's optional if you'd rather live on campus or off campus for that first year. Um, Penn State Altoona, for just an example, again, keeping in mind that there are slightly larger and slightly smaller campuses, Altoona has four residence halls. Uh, we have 850 spaces, or excuse me, 889 spaces available across those four residence halls, and 650 of them we reserve specifically for first year students. So in terms of housing, um, there's a lot of options, there's a lot of availability, it really depends on what you're looking for, but off-campus housing is often available as well. Um, cars on campus are kind of the follow-up question to that, right? Where am I going to live and how am I going to get there and back if it's not on campus? Uh, University Park, and again, I believe Barron, uh, there are certain stipulations to how you can have a car, and usually it goes by credentials. So they're going to count how many credits you have under your belt. Uh, most of the other campuses, they are pretty open about it. A first year student is able to have a car. It will vary a little bit, um, again, campus to campus, what they charge you for parking. Some are hardly anything, some are a little more. Um, Altoona is about 150 for the full year or 80 per semester. Again, just to kind of give you a ballpark of where some of those Commonwealth campuses might sit. Um, but generally speaking, I think most of those Commonwealth campuses are pretty open to that flexibility. And if you have any questions, again, there's always those admissions offices at those respective campuses that are gonna have a lot more accurate information for you to that campus. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, so we are actually getting to the end of our program and I'd like to take the opportunity to ask all of our awesome panelists uh, some of their favorite Penn State traditions. Um, before I do that though, I do wanna say that we are uh, actively answering all of the questions that you are asking. Um, if we, for any reason, don't get to answer your question or if you think of a question after the fact, you are always welcome to reach out to us at admissions at psu.edu. It's on the slide and uh, I'm putting it in the chat so you can all copy that. Um, and now I'll start with Stacy. if you want to share with us your favorite Penn State tradition. 
Sure. Uh, so thank you, Lori, and thank you all for hanging with us for a great presentation tonight. Um, so I am a very proud Penn State alumni um, and uh, Penn State family. My favorite Penn State tradition is our ice cream at Penn State. I think we have the best ice cream in the whole world at the Berkey Creamery. Uh, I don't know if I want to say little known fact, but I will throw out the fact that Ben and Jerry actually came to Penn State to learn how to make ice cream. So if you uh, are an ice cream lover, Penn State is the place for you. Um, and Death by Chocolate is my favorite in case you were curious. Thank you so much, Stacy. Celine, would you like to uh, share your favorite tradition? Of course. So um, I am recently um, new to the college. So this was my first time attending one of our medal ceremonies, which is the time where we award all of our graduating scholars. And it was just such a great experience seeing all the scholars walk across the stage, receive their medallion, and then have the engineering college run in right after to start graduation. Because uh, it's actually the first part that happens over whole graduation weekend. So all the scholars wear them all weekend. So it was just really nice to see all these great students who I've been working with for the past year just graduate and hear all the successful things that they're about to do. Very proud moment. Um, okay, and Adam, we'll uh, finish up with you if you could share your favorite Penn State tradition. Um, so like Stacy, I'm also a Penn State graduate and extremely proud of it. Uh, so I think one of my favorites is probably the We Are chant. There's a whole wonderful history behind it. If you, when you come up to Penn State to visit, be sure to ask an ambassador, a tour guide, or whoever's showing you around about it. I'm sure they'll tell you. Um, but it's kind of a cool way that people kind of can like let you know, like, oh, hey, Penn State, um, like at airports and stuff like that, the logo. I think it's just a really neat way of communicating um, that kind of exists within the school. And there's a cool connection to it with history, too. Um, that's the other cool part about Penn State. You can be just about anywhere in the world. And if you have the Penn State logo on, someone's going to call you out and say hi. I travel a lot for this job. I had a layover in Boston when we were traveling. Celine can tell you about it. Um, and like twice when I was sitting in the airport, I had somebody come up and, hey, how, you know, I saw the sweater. What's up? And, you know, their nephew was here and their daughter just graduated, things like that. So it's a cool, cool little club to be in. Couldn't agree more. Uh, well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, thank you for to our awesome panelists. You've shared such really valuable information and um, really loved hearing all of it. Uh, again, if you haven't had a chance to have your question answered, it looks like most of them are being answered, but uh, you can always reach out to us at admissions at psu.edu. We're happy to answer your questions anytime. Um, have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, we are.